Hey everybody, I'm Erica Jane, here with my co-author, Brian Moylan, and we're going to talk about Pretty Mess, our book that we wrote together. Yes. I'm going to sign. You're going to watch my signature. Yes, it looks like a scribble. If you don't like it, I don't know what to say. <laughs> scribble away. Take it away, my friend. So, um, welcome everybody. We're doing some live signing, getting everybody their books. Um, how's it going? You've been at some real life signings the past few days. And I've got a couple more to go to. I've enjoyed meeting with the people. Um, what have you enjoyed the most about seeing everyone? Just how, you know, everyone's smiling and everybody um, excited to kind of get the story, you know? And that's what's cool about it is, uh, when do you get to write a book about your life? Exactly, now. <laughs> right now, exactly. Um, I heard you had a very special first person in line in New Jersey. Kim D. And how's Kim D? Uh, she was very sweet, very nice. You know, I don't, I watch, um, I know, I'm very, very little familiar with uh, that whole storyline, but she was very sweet. Thank you, Kim D, for showing up. Did you get us invitations to the posh, posh fashion show? No, I did not, but I think that we might be able to get on the list. Okay, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Um, so we're signing books here. You can buy signed copies right now at prettymessbook.com. Dot com. Prettymessbook.com and um, order this away. Is, this is what my signature looks like. Do not be offended. I literally only write the word Erica and basically the only thing you can make out is the E. Yeah. And the dot of the I. Yeah. Don't be offended. I mean, it looks fine to me. Listen. Mine's, mine's just as messy. Yeah. What's Messy. Tom's signature look like? Ooh, the worst. <laughs> if you think this is bad, forget it. Tom's like, take a doctor times a billion. So um, you just asked who gets a chance to write a book about their lives. Why did you want to write a book about your life? Well, the offer came, and I'm in the habit of saying yes, like we talked about in the book, and I thought it was a great way to tell my story, um, and, and I've really enjoyed the process. And what did you like the most about the process? Well, I think the most interesting part of it was going back and actually examining your life a little bit because you kind of forget a lot of stuff. Yeah. And you, we forget how much you really have lived and, and all the great things that have happened and kind of also not all the, you know, some bad things too. Yeah. It was kind of, and how I remembered things versus how my mother remembered things yes. or the people around me. So it's kind of, it's an interesting process for sure. So what did it feel like when you, I know you got a box of stuff from your mother in the mail with like your old dance report cards and yeah. like pictures. And yeah. so what did it feel like opening that up and looking through all of these old memories? Um, it felt really good. And um, it's nice to see just how far I've come. You yeah. know, it just from being a kid and still doing it. Still from jumping up on the coffee table and giving shows to now giving shows. Still on coffee tables. <laughs> Selling books. PrettyMessBook.com. PrettyMessBook.com. Did I say that enough? PrettyMessBook.com. Here's my signature. Don't be mad. Okay. Um, did, was there anything about the writing process that you have found uh, challenging or difficult? I'm so glad that I had you as a co-author. Oh, well, thank you. And here's the thing. I'm going to say this because a couple of people have been like, you didn't write this book. You had a ghostwriter. Bullshit. <laughs> you try and write a book and let me know how you do. It is not easy. You need a professional. I want to say you. thank you for helping me find my voice through the book. And really, we did a lot of interviewing. Oh, my God. We Just did like so much. On the phone every day for months. Months. People don't realize that. That's what it takes for yeah. us to craft this whole story. It's not just five minutes and, oh, this is what I did. And that is the, you know, it, it's it's a little bit more complicated than that. It was like me making you tell the same story five times and asking you for more and more details every time. And you kept probing and probing and probing and the finer points and what does that really feel like? What does that look like? And where does it, what was the beginning, middle, and end of it? I, I thought it was... Great, and I can't thank you enough. Thank you. Yeah, it was way more work than I anticipated. I will say, See? and um, and I, you write for a living. <laughs> exactly. You're a so fucking, I write all the time. You're a professional, and yeah. I remember you looking at me like, "Babe, this is like, <laughs> this is real." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and just like going back and forth with you and the editor, and like you being like, "I don't like this part. I like this part. Change this word. This was really well said." And like collaborating with you on like really getting things down and getting the stories right, getting all the details and making something like really fun and inspirational for the people. Yeah, and it's not always as that simple. Yeah. It's not always that simple. So, um, 
I know that some of the other Beverly Hills ladies have written books. I know that your boss, Andy Cohen, has written a book. Did you yes. get any advice um, from people uh, before going into this process? Andy just said, be yourself, you know, which is what he's always kind of said. And, and it's simple, but it's true. And it's also the hardest thing to do because finding your voice and finding yourself is in making, getting that that across is not always as easy as you think. No. <laughs> not always as easy that's as you think. That's why we have therapists. It. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, okay, you know, but that's another thing I'd like to bring up. A lot of people like, well, was this cathartic? Was it therapeutic? No. No, you need to go to a therapist if you want therapy. If you want to, this was not cathartic at all. Well, it I, was more like a reexamination of your life and trying to put it all together. Well, I think that the reason why you're writing a book and why the reason the book will really speak to people is you have worked this stuff out. Like, you know, it, it's about the realizations you come through to leading a very full and interesting life. Thank you. Um, so, Some people call me crazy. <laughs> I mean, crazy you are like crazy. a fox, baby. <laughs> crazy like a fox. Okay, so um, we have a whole ton of fan questions. Let's get to them. All right. So uh, this is from Abigail in Feeding Hills, Massachusetts. Hello, Abigail. You've become an LGBTQ icon for so many people, including myself. Thank you. Being openly gay, I can't thank you enough for your love and support. What's made you want to use your platform and voice to stand up and be involved with my community? Um, because if you read in my book, Pretty Mess. PrettyMessBook.com. Yeah, you'll see that um, my introduction into the LGBTQ community was through Children's Theater Performing Arts School. This is where my, my earliest... Um, my earliest friends were gay and were, you know, and uh, art brought us together and I will never forget that and, you know, that's, that's who I am. So, Andrew from Fairfax, Virginia wants to know, Hello. what's next? Music. New music, new single soon and I'm also, uh, I also have an EP and if you're in Palm Springs at the White Party, I'm performing. Um... Is there any music... That April. What? <laughs> what, babe? <laughs> Is there any music that you are listening to and loving right now? A lot of mine. <laughs> <laughs> and are you loving it? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> good. I think it's great. Okay, good. Um, so Aaron from Austin, Texas says, after reading your completed book, did you look at the life you've lived any differently? No, actually, I didn't. I think that I remembered some things differently than, say, my mom did. But, uh, no. And, and um, you know, there were some things that we left out. Yeah. Because they were just too nuts. But, um, no, I think I, I like where we are, and I like, I like where, where it is. Um, so I remember we did one of these, um, like, a month ago on your, on your page, and someone asked, like, what stories made it to the cutting room floor, and I remembered one of my favorite things of that. But tell the term the that it is. Oh, killing your darlings. That's we a literary it... term I, I, I learned, because I don't know anything about writing books. Well, now you do. Um, was We killed a lot of darlings. <laughs> oh, we sure did. But one of my favorites that didn't make it into the book was the scary cobra with the red jewel eyes at your uncle's house. Tell it. And, yeah, and how you just thought it was the scariest, weirdest, most country thing. I guess we can tell it now. Um, <laughs> in the book, I talk about my uncle, and um, he, he was kind of uh, insane. And um, he had this, uh, the house looked kind of like Scarface, looking back on it. And he had a gold cobra with red jeweled eyes. And I was little at the time, maybe three. And it literally stood, like, eye to eye. And it was just like a bizarre experience. <laughs> they that were... They were really, it was intense. <laughs> um, so Antonio from Topeka, Kansas Hello. wants to know, what do, what do you do to unwind after a long day? Put on my pajamas, hang out with Tiago, and watch Turner Classics. Do you have a favorite Turner Classic when it comes on you're like super excited? Double Indemnity. Oh, amazing. Right? Yes. Gilda. Um... Yeah, those are my probably my top two. I mean, I really love Turner Classic, so but Double Indemnity. I'm always really I like noir. Yeah, I. It's a very Erica Jane look. Kinda. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So Vicky from Gansevoort, New York. Hey, Vicky. Wants to know has Tom read the book yet? No, no one has read the book. Renee. I don't know if Renee's read it. I haven't sent it to her. 
I know you went over some of the things in it. Yeah, she kind of was with us when we were writing it. Yeah. But has she held it? No. I mean, Mom also, she can, you know. Whatever. She'll get one. She'll get one. She lived it. She doesn't need to read it. You know what I mean? Like... She's probably going to read it to make sure you got it all right. Yeah, right. You left out a certain part. Believe right. me, she has no problems. She knows who she is. It's all good. All right. Alyssa from Leander, Texas. Hi, Alyssa. Says, if you could give your younger self advice, would you? Yes, I would. And I would tell my younger self, it's fine. Relax. You're going to be okay. You're on the right path. Uh, Vincent from Winston-Salem, North Carolina wants to know, when will you make a visual album? When I got the money. <laughs> <laughs> when you got that Beyonce money. Beyonce, honey. Yeah, you know, when the time is right, I would love to. Thank you for uh, believing in me. Yeah, I would like to, but, you know, the, the time, I, all that stuff is timing. Well, and we do talk in the book about how uh, the visual component of the Erica Jane project has always been an important way of, like, selling it and talking about the message. I'm a visual person. Yeah. And, and I have always believed hair, makeup, you know, lighting, clothing, all of that, it's, it's show. It's show. It's not just, you know, it's one not, aspect. It's not just the music. It's the whole feeling of the whole thing. Adrian from St. Louis Park, Minnesota. Says. It's a very good question. Yes. What is your favorite scent, either for perfume or just in general? Gardenia. Hmm. But here's the thing a lot of people don't know about me. I'm allergic to perfume. But I, yeah. Really? Yes. I love to buy uh, cologne for Tom. And um, it's one of my favorite things because I just really like it on him. Um, and I have a lot of, um, like, night-blooming jasmine in my garden, a lot of gardenia, things like that. But I cannot wear fragrance. It gives me migraine. Really? But I, yes, but I love it on everyone else. That's fascinating. I really, and I will always ask, oh, what is that? What? And I, you know, I kind of miss out. Well, now I have to return your Christmas present. Shit. <laughs> uh, Alex from New Jersey says that you're an inspiration to a lot of people, sexy, adorable, real housewife, and real mom admire you and wish you nothing but happiness, joy, and blessings. Oh, so it wasn't even a question. I was just telling you you're awesome. You know what? Thank you very much. From I, I truly appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. I Really, thank you. Andrea has a question. Andrea yes. from Virginia Beach has a question that I'm going to answer for you. Okay. And it's, are you as awesome in real life as you appear on TV? And I have always said, you know, writing about the housewives, that whenever you meet a real housewife in real life, they're exactly as they are on television. And meeting you and working with you, you're exactly like you are on television, which is smart and cool, and you get it, and you're with it. And so, yes, you are as awesome in real life as you are on television. I'll give you the five bucks later. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, baby. I appreciate that. Um, and you know you can still rip me up in your recaps. Yeah, I would if, if I... You have to. This is not about, you have to. That's, it's not, yeah. I know. I mean, girl, I, I love you from before we worked together. Right. So, it's, you know. So, there. Well, that's what always amazes me about The Real Housewives, and I'm sure you've experienced this, and you experience it differently every season, is that there are people that love everyone, and there are people that hate everybody. And no one's favorite is someone else. You know, everyone's hero is someone else's villain. Yolanda told me the best. She said, Erica, there's a, it's an ensemble cast for a reason. Everyone has their favorite girl for a reason. They may like this one's strength, this one's directness, this one's tenderness. You be you, be authentic. It's never going to be roses and rainbows all the time take the good with the bad and just go with it um so andrea from visalia california wants to know what is the biggest obstacle you've had to face when trying to grow your business probably in the beginning just getting a name and just trying to um you know gather people to the project make the project uh Make more people know about the project. Publicize the project. And, you know, um, I'll, be, I'll be very honest with you. Uh, Real Housewives has definitely... Without Real Housewives, there wasn't this book. Right. You know, and so there you go. Know what it is. Amanda from Phoenix, Arizona wants to know, what do you think, feel, about Lady Gaga? I think she's incredible. She's a great singer, songwriter, performer. I think she's a visionary. I think she's done a lot with her life. Yeah. And I hope she feels better because I don't think she feels very good a lot. She's in a lot of pain, I think. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so uh, we are now going to take a call and talk to a fan live. Oh, my God. It's Amy from Kansas City, Michigan, on the, or Kansas City, Missouri, sorry, on the line. Hi, sweetie. watched you for 
from the beginning, and I watched when you were on Home and Family and Dancing Stars and all of that. Um, and I really look up to you in the way that you just, you're just you just genuine. Thank you, and sweetie. You're welcome. I had a quick question. Um, we, I love all your taglines from Bravo, but if you could assign one phrase or motto for your life, what would, you, what would it be? I'm as fabulous as you think I am. <laughs> <laughs> I had to. I'm sorry. You know Brian wrote my tagline this yeah. year. Oh, cool. Yeah. I love that one. Yes. Um, and it is Amy's anniversary, and her husband bought her your book for her anniversary gift. That is the sweetest thing ever. Well, happy anniversary, baby. That's awesome. Thanks, love. I appreciate the support. Thank you. Bye, Amy. Okay, baby. Thanks, Amy. Um, we have so many more fan questions. Good, Do you let's want get some it more? Going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Stephanie from Piedmont, California says, I love how honest and loyal you are to your friends and family. What do you look for most in a friend? Acceptance, non judgment. I think that um, when I meet people, I'm willing to kind of just accept them for who they are, whether that be angry, mean, whatever. Um, and I would prefer it if people would do that for me, too. I'm uh, friends with some people that you would, re that, like, nobody else is. I'm friends with some really difficult people. <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm, I, I am friends with some people that, like, no one likes. But I, we get along, so it's cool. Is there anything that's, like, I can't handle, like, if you're late, I will have to stop being your friend. Like, well, then you can never be friends with Doree. <laughs> Um, is there anything that's like a friendship deal breaker for you? Yeah, I think if I told you something in confidence and you broke that confidence, that would be a problem for me. Okay. And don't steal. Well, that's, you know what? Actually, stealing is more than breaking confidence. <laughs> Have you had a lot of friends steal from you? None. Okay, good. None. But it's something I would not be able to tolerate. Yeah, that's true. Um, me neither. Uh, Just so, so you know, I'm signing all these books, XOXO, Erica. Yes, I only sign with my first name. Yes, it looks crazy, kind of like me. Okay. When you sign, like, legal documents... It looks just like that. Really? And sometimes they make me re-sign them. Hmm. Um, Even my tax returns. This is a great question from Eltia in Pomona, New York. Hey. What do you and Tom do on date night? We go to one of the three restaurants we like in Los Angeles, and then we go to the movies. Uh, what are the three restaurants you like in Los Angeles? Uh, well, one of them is Medeo. One of them is um, Morton's, excuse me, Medeo, Morton's, and then the third one is Giorgio Baldi in Santa Monica. And what is the last movie you and Tom saw together? Uh, the Post. Oh, what did you think of The Post? I loved it. I loved it, too. Um, I wanted to give an Oscar to Meryl Streep's Caftan. That was really important. I mean, she, but you know, she frustrated me. I was wondering if this woman was going to find her voice, and she did. Yeah, I mean, thank God. That yeah. was, to me, the most interesting part of the movie. I just wanted to hear her story. Well, Tom and I have this thing where we, every Oscar season, we try to watch the um, nominees for Best Picture yeah. and go to, like, dinner and a movie. It's corny, but we do it on Sunday. And so we watched Darkest Hour and The Post, and that was the last movie we saw together. Okay. Um... Amber from Naples, Florida wants to know, who is your idol and who is your idol? Yes. Uh, I think that um, I've admired a lot of people, I think, artistically. Um, you know, I'm a huge Madonna fan, Prince fan, Michael Jackson fan. Who is my idol? You know, probably my grandmother. She's gone. But, you know, she's probably my closest. She probably gave me, um, yeah, she probably, her, her wisdom probably struck with me the most. Tina from Williamstown, Victoria, Canada. I was gonna say that. I was gonna say that sounds like Canada when you said Victoria. I was like, that has to be outside the states. Would you considering mentoring someone? I mean, I I would, but it, that takes a lot of time. To be a mentor is a very serious position. I would have to have like yes, but yes. I mean, I could. I I don't know if anybody want my mentorship. I don't know. I mean, it's I'm a little unconventional. <laughs> right. Right. Well, I think that that's the interesting thing we talk about the, in the book and something that people can take away is that you always had to find your own way of doing things. Yes. That you tried the conventional way and it didn't always work. And when it didn't, you had to find another way to become successful. Right. I mean, you still have to show up on time every day. You have to have a, a massive level of self-discipline in life. 
But there are always, there's always a way. You just gotta find it, you know? Um, so, Stephanie from Piedmont, California. Hi, Stephanie. Um, oh, no, we did that one already. Oh, sorry, sorry Stephanie. Um, Ashley from Angier, North Carolina says, I've been on the fence for about a year now of opening my own teak, which is my dream. How or what finally made you go for your dream? I think that, well, my dreams, I started dreaming, you know, my dream of performing and stuff like that happened when I was very small. And I just never stopped. And I never, well, when I did stop, I found myself not being my, my true self. And I decided I didn't want to do that anymore. I wanted to be brave again and put, literally put one foot in front of the other. So do that. Put one foot in front of the other. So, since this is your uh, biography, whose tell-all book would you like to read and why? I don't know. There's a lot of people's story that I find fascinating. What about you? Who would you like to read? Francis Bean Cobain. That's an interesting one. Did Courtney write a book yet? Yeah, Courtney wrote a book, didn't she? Uh, She's interesting. She... I've She's read a book about her. I feel like she must have written a book. She's super intelligent. Yeah, like yeah. Mensa, right? Yeah, I love her. She's very bright. Um, so Ben from O'Fallon, Missouri has a question that is in the book, but it's how did Tom propose? I got down on one knee on the balcony and said, hey, would you marry me? And I said, of course I will. Uh, he had a good ring, too, so was it. Right, <laughs> it was nice I mean. Day. Yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Alicia from St. Charles, Missouri wants to know, what is your daily routine? What time do you wake up and what time do you go to bed? Um, I wake up around 4.35 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I go to bed around 9 or 10. Um, yeah, but it always changes if we're working. We, like the other day, we were up for 22 hours. So it just kind of depends, uh, whatever's happening. And when I get up, the first thing I do, Tiago and I go to Starbucks and get Tom and I's coffee. And then I come back. He's, Tom is still asleep because he gets up at 5.30. And I go in the library and read for about an hour. Uh, what is your Starbucks? And I call you sometimes. Oh, and then I'm still asleep on the East Coast. Like, girl, why are you bothering me? I was up all night writing your damn book. I know. Because <laughs> I needed to make sure you got the corrections. <laughs> what is your Starbucks order? Uh, tall, uh, venti Americano, one pump of mocha. Um... What is, uh, this is from Brittany in Round Lake Beach, Illinois. Hello. What's your number one key to self-confidence? Winging it. Literally. I used to struggle with this. Brittany, let me tell you something. I was like, when am I going to be confident? When am I going to be, you know, what does it take to be confident? What, just fucking do it. Literally. And it sounds so cliche and so stupid, but just start acting like it. Whatever it is, just enter boldly. Whatever you do, I don't care if you mess up, just do it boldly, right? Enter boldly. Enter I think boldly. That's, girl, that's the name of book two. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was already somebody's title. It might be. It is. <laughs> we got to come up with something else. Um, so William from Seattle, Washington says, Pretty Mess is my number one jam of all your songs. Thank you. Which is your favorite? Uh, Pretty Mess definitely holds a special place in my heart because it was the beginning of the project. It's the name of my record company. It's the name of my book. You know, um, you know, I, I like them all. I, you know, there's some good ones. Painkiller, One Hot Pleasure, Crazy. I couldn't choose. Um, my favorites are Painkiller and uh, You Make Me Want to Give You Everything. Yeah, Give You Everything, which was the first record I ever recorded. And we talk about it in the book, prettymessbook.com. Brian Moylan, Erica Girardi, we wrote it. It's good. Buy it. Um, I listened to a lot of Erica Jane while I was writing the book, and so I got my, like, top, tw you know, 25, uh, <laughs> Top Spotify 25? Of I the, love it. Of the, of the year. And, and how was, like, was it? three Erica Jane songs out there. <laughs> yeah, but you got paid to do it, so it was okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, so Abby from Columbia, South Carolina wants to know, how do I become a badass bitch like you? You already are. You just gotta start saying it. You just don't let people call you a liar and take it down, lie, you know, take it. Uh, Brian from Los Angeles, California wants to know, what is the biggest misconception about you? That I'm icy, that I'm cold. When anybody knows, spends five minutes with me knows that I'm really not. I'm just very cautious about who I warm up to and who I let in. That's it. And I can smell bullshit from 10 miles away. 
Am I right? Or am I right? Yes. Uh, Andrea from Australia. No way. Wants to know That's when fucking cool. Are you coming to Australia? Andrea, I was there in July. I was doing some um, promo for Housewives. I would love to. I've been to Sydney. I've never been to Melbourne. You make it happen, and I'm there, Australia. I love Australia. How have you not been invited to Mardi Gras, the, like, big gay? Yeah, just not yet. I mean, I'm sure it's on the way. Just I have mean, it, just have it. You know, it's a long way away. And it's, it's an ex- very far. And it's expensive to bring a show there. Yes. You, that's, it's, you know, dollars and cents at some point, yeah. Okay, we're going to play a question, or a game. It's called 22 Questions in Two Minutes. Let's okay? do it, So baby. rapid fire. Are you ready? Yeah. Where were you born? Atlanta, Georgia. Who would you want to play you in a movie? Um, Margot Robbie. What, that's good. What was your first job? I did a commercial when I was three. What is your greatest accomplishment? I mean, I've had a lot. Probably my son. Uh, what? Although he's there on his own, but I still, you know, consider him. You were instrumental. In- I was instrumental. <laughs> uh, what is your biggest fear? Death. What? Not mine, though. What is the one thing you need to have in your fridge at all times? Water. What is who is the most interesting person you've met recently? Brian Moylan. Oh, thank you. Or RuPaul. RuPaul's uh, pretty cool too. That yeah. was a nice moment. Uh, how do you take your coffee? Uh, Americano one pump mocha. Uh, what is your middle name? Erica Nay, N-A-Y. I'll tell you, it's in the book, prettymessbook.com. Pretty mess. Erica Girardi Brian Moylan. Um, my mother's name is Renee. My father called her Nene. I ended up with Erica Nay. Hate it. She didn't want to put it in the book, but I made her. Uh, what is your biggest pet peeve? We did not kill that darling. No, we did not. We <laughs> kept her alive. What is my biggest pet peeve? Yep. Um, don't lie to me. What is your favorite hobby? Sleeping at this point. What is your guilty pleasure? Fast food. Oh, I know that. Yeah. What color is your toothbrush? I have a Sonicare, so it's um, white. Sonicare. Uh, are you a morning person or a night owl? I'm a morning person. What is your worst habit? I'm messy. You know, I'll drop things on that. Yeah, I can be messy. What is the last gift you gave? Hold on, I just gave something really good. Holy shit. Okay, pass. Keep going. What is the last album that you bought or streamed? I just did this the other day for research, and it's older. It's not Diana Ross, but it's somebody like that. I was listening for, because we're in the studio now. Shit. Uh, What is your favorite thing to cook? Oh, I'm terrible. Maybe a grilled cheese. I'm pretty good at that. I can make pasta, too. Yeah. yeah. Which is not his favorite. Well, yeah, yeah, well, not my pasta, but yeah. (laughs) Uh, What cause is dear to your heart? What cause is dear to my heart? You know, Tom and I give a lot of money to, we had $2 million in charitable donations last year. Wow. Just in case you all were wondering. Uh, yeah. So there are lots of different things there. All, obviously Alzheimer's is close to our heart, but you know, I, I think that, you know, helping each other out, helping out people. And you two have both been, you've also been big political donors. For many years. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of, supported a lot of different candidates. Uh, where do you want to go that you've never been? Seychelles or Maldives. And Australia. Oh, you've been to Australia. Been to Australia, but I'd like to go on um, a vacation there. I th- it looks pretty, like, you know, kind of magical. It's the yeah. water and stuff. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? I don't know, but somewhere pretty fabulous, I think. Name two items on your bucket list. Um, probably jumping out of an airplane, and I'd like to make a billion dollars. That's a I, good one. I mean, you like to keep the goals very attainable. <laughs> but when you dream big, if you shoot, what is it in, in Paris is burning? If you shoot for the moon and you hit a star, whatever, you know, shoot for the stars and you get them, it's all good. Yeah. Um, this is a good question from uh, Acacia in Las Vegas. Who is your biggest fashion icon? Uh, I tend to... <sighs> Really like the um, screen sirens of the past, so like Marilyn Monroe, that whole golden era of Hollywood, like the noirs and stuff like that. So the whole Hollywood Dream Factory still like is my favorite. 
Kara Lee from Janesville, Wisconsin wants to know, any chance that you will be on Young and the Restless in the near future? Ooh, is she, is she psychic? So oh, I miss Eileen. I miss Eileen too. Uh, Alexandra from Belleville, Ontario wants to know, what's the sexiest outfit you own? Jeez, I don't know. I mean, those costumes are insane. I don't even know if there's, I don't even know what's sexy anymore. You know, it's just, it's also over the top at this point. It doesn't, I don't know. Um, can I ask you about this dress? Yeah. What well, is this? So this is a latex onesie. And then my stylist, Danny Michelle, she's really cool. She had this plastic custom made skirt so it's got pretty mess in different fonts and um sharona la rocks did that for us so we're very thankful we've worked with him for years and he and danny collaborated to make the skirt how many hours a day do you work out bridget from omaha nebraska wants to know thanks bridget <laughs> i feel guilty um okay so if i'm not in rehearsal rehearsal is different because you get skinny in rehearsal because you're always moving around like with the stars i was a noodle um, maybe an hour, hour, no more than an hour and 15. Do you have a workout you I prefer? have a trainer that I go to and, you know, he, we're constantly mixing it up. It's full body movements. It's explosive. So you can get a great workout. How hot is he? He's cute. Okay. Yeah. Um. But that's not why I'm there. No, but I mean, sometimes. I'm motivated for me to look good. I find sometimes like, you know what I'm saying? Like cutie. I gotta pay him the money. He's gotta know what the hell he's. he's you know, he's really experienced. Um, would you like a? Do you like a boy trainer more than a lady trainer? I've always had men trainers, but not always men dance teachers. But in training, yes. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, Wesley wants to know. Uh, he has a question that many of us know the answer to. Yes. Which is how many fucks do you give? Um, it depends uh, on what it is, but usually none. Not one. Zero. 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 Done. Done. Uh, Amy wants to know a question I'm sure many people have to ask. What is your skincare routine? Um, well, first off, you need to take your makeup off every night. You need to stay out of the sun. Uh, please hydrate and do not smoke and drink and go to bed. After that, if you have skin problems, you need to see a dermatologist to save up your money and go to someone good. That's really the truth. That person will basically get you on a good skincare regimen. Stay out of the sun, stay out of the sun, stay out of the sun. Do you drink a lot? Alcohol? Yeah. No. Um, no. When you do, do you have a drink of choice? Uh, it's either vodka or tequila. Uh, tequila, if we really want to have a good time. Vodka, <laughs> yeah, because if it's... If you just want to have a medium good time. Well, no, because it's a stimulant. <laughs> yeah. You know, so you, and then vodka, if you're like, you know, more of a lounge. But if we're going to have a great time, like let's say we're in Miami and we're hell bent on having a good time, we're going to have some tequila. Andrea from Louis Louisville, Kentucky. But you know what's interesting what? during filming is that Kyle Richards and I, I try not to drink soda. Like I drink Cokes, right? I try not to drink them when I'm not working, except during Housewives. Kyle and I are always like, would you like a Coke? Will you have a Coke with me? Because with sugar, you know, people don't realize how long the days oh, are. Oh, yeah. They think it's just like, oh, you're just meeting for lunch. And I get that, and that's what it looks like, and good. I'm, I'm glad you believe that. <laughs> But it's really a long, it can be very long days. And um, she and I, like, you know, we'll drink Cokes together. I remember, this is in the book, that when you were pregnant, you were eating very healthy. And the one treat you would allow yourself on Fridays At was, noon. was a Snickers bar. And, and a Coke. And I was like, that's a real good treat. It was, and it was only on Fridays at noon. I would walk across the, the street to the Gristides, downtown in Battery Park City, you know, where the Freedom Tower is now, the, you know. And um, that was the one thing. Yeah, otherwise, then I was really strict. Uh, Andrea from Louisville, Kentucky wants to know, what is your favorite lipstick shade? Mostly pinks. Um, my whole face is based around pinks and golds because I'm really fair. And that's mostly what you see, whether it's a baby pink or a fuchsia pink, like the other night on um, Watch What Happens Live. Pinks and golds. Um, Tony from Burlington, New Jersey, wants to know, how did your husband's friends and colleagues respond to the entrance of Erica Jane? Uh, some were, uh, well, the men were great, still are, and I'm friendly with all of them. Um, a couple of the women, and I spoke about this on Radio Andy the other day, there are two very powerful women in Los Angeles that treated me like gold, and one of them, I, I think I told you this, yeah. one of them said to me, you know, you're still that same 27-year-old girl I met, and I'm so very proud of you. 
Um, and then a lot of them were not so nice. Uh, you know, I think they thought I was there for all the wrong reasons and the typical stuff. So, and that's okay too. You know, like you said, they were looking around wondering if they were next. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Sarika from St. Charles, Illinois wants to know what makes you feel beautiful? Ah. Uh, it's not a lot, but if I work out and I, it, after I work out, I always feel pretty because I feel like I'm accomplished and, and I just feel good. You know, that's kind of what makes me feel pretty when my hair is clean. I know that sounds really dumb, but when I've had a good blowout and a good workout, I feel great. <laughs> uh, Doesn't take much. <laughs> Adeline from Whitehall, Pennsylvania wants to know, how did you get started in the music business? Where do you find the confidence to perform so erotically in front of so many people? Um, I started performing at an early age, so I was always in costumes. We talk about, in the book, uh, going in, in, going to Europe and, and seeing women in um, topless cabarets and stuff like that. To me, the body is a tool. I grew up in a dance studio. I grew up that it doesn't... Um, I don't know, I just don't see it the same way everybody else does. It's yeah. a performance, I leave it there. That's what it is. It's kind of like, you know, when people ask, are you at home in your cat suit? Like, no, I mean, is, you know, no. It's just kind of, that's where it lives, on stage. Um, so Amanda from Marietta, Georgia wants to know this. Hey, Amanda. From, from Marietta. Yeah, I know. Sticking to the book theme, what is the title of the current chapter of your life? Shit's real good. <laughs> <laughs> Shit's real good. Okay. Um, Christina from Marysville, Washington wants to know, if you could witness any event of the past, present, or future, what would it be? I would have liked to have seen John Kennedy get inaugura the inauguration. Interesting. I don't know. I just thought it was kind of inspirational. I would have liked to have heard Martin Luther King speak, you know. I, there's a few things like that that I would like to have seen. Uh, Elise from Orlando, Florida wants to know, can she borrow your glam squad? Yes, Elise, but you got to pay them. Uh, because remember, I only have paid friends. I don't have real friends. You true. know what that's coming from. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do. Um, so Sergio from Sacramento, California wants to know, what does the title Pretty Mess mean to you? Fantasy, love, escape, glitz, glamour, and fun. How fast was that, Sergio? Thought you were going to catch me. Uh, Andrea from Winder, Georgia. Hey, Winder. You know, it's kind of in the country, but not so much anymore. Uh, when are you coming to Atlanta for performance? Your hometown peeps, especially your fellow Fleetwood dancers. Wait, who was this? Andrea. Wait, Andrea, did we go to... Hold on, Andrea. Did we not only dance at Fleetwood, but did we go to middle school together? Is this Andrea with the blonde hair that I think it is? Because if so, girl, call me. Um, I don't know, but soon. Okay. Uh, Allison from Oakland, California wants to know. She probably would have said we went to middle school together. Yeah? Maybe. I don't I know. Feel like she, but, I mean, she knew you were a Fleetwood dancer. Yeah. Isn't so that crazy? So maybe, oh, I wonder if this is Andrea. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, Allison wants to know, what's your advice for a stay-at-home mom who was once kind of fabulous to get back to her fabulous? Okay, you need to perform around the house. I don't care if the baby, is she, does she have, is she have kids and stuff? I assume. Okay, how about this? When the kids are asleep or they're at school or whatever, do your makeup, do your hair, work out, do 50 sit-ups, do 50 push-ups, put on your favorite song and lip sync to it. Do it in the mirror. I don't care. Whatever it is, just keep parading around the house. Fabulous. Nobody's going to see you. You can do whatever you want. Just bring out that inner diva. Baby steps, baby steps. I swear to God, she'll bust out before you know it. Alex from Johns Creek, Georgia wants to know, any plans on releasing an Erica Jane beverage line? Yes, I'm currently taking over spirits. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, it would be great, but I have no plans for that. But thank you. It's a good idea. Uh, Shelly from McElfeeny, Florida? Where? I don't see it. Right here. McClaney? 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 Come on, you're the educated one. I'm sorry. Get it right. Uh, if you had to work a nine to five job, what would you do for a living? We talked about some of the, the crappy nine to five jobs you had in, in the book. 
Do you know that somebody, <laughs> I have something to share with you after that, after we do this. Um, there's gotta be some interesting nine to fives. Uh, I don't know, that's an interesting, that's an interesting, I don't know what I do. I don't know that I'm good at anything. I'm not, I would not be good at customer service. I don't think I do, I don't think I do well. I'd like to own a store. That'd be cool. Maybe I could own a boutique or something. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to open a pie shop. And mostly like bake the pies, because I'm with you, I couldn't deal with people being stupid. Are you a good baker? That's I'm a like real talent. Good. It's a real talent to bake. I got some, my grandmother was a very good baker. And oh, I got did some she have good her. recipes? She does have some good recipes. Oh. But I mean, it's all like old school, so it's like full of Crisco. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, but that's kind of, it tastes good though. Yeah, it tastes real good. Um, so, let's see. I don't know uh, what I do, that's good. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, well, we talk about your college fantasy in the book. I would, yes, so I always, prettymessbook.com. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have to be shameless. Here's the thing, uh, whenever performing wasn't going right, which was a lot, I'd always say, well, you know, I could always go to college. Bullshit. I'm the only person in my family that did not go to college. My mother was on Dean's List, President's List. My son went, my husband has more degrees than a thermometer. I'm the only person with a 12th grade education. Here's the thing. I, and like I told you, I have visions of having a backpack, going to college, a ponytail, lip gloss. I'm the most popular girl and I hire all the smart students to do my work, and I hold parties. Yeah. And just like, pretty Live. mess up, pretty mess just, you. Yeah, college, just college down. You know, like Playboy top 10 colleges or something. Party schools. That's where I wanna, wherever that party school is, call me. Ashley from Sequin, Washington wants to know, if you could have dinner with anyone, alive or dead, who would it be? Jesus Christ. Interesting. I need to know what was going on. Um, the Pope, maybe too. He might be interesting. I just want to know the answers to a couple of questions. So Todd from Denver, Colorado wants hey, to know, Todd. which chapter was the hardest one to write or talk about? They weren't that painful. Like Brian said earlier in the interview today, we, I had already come through a lot of it. So now it was just really retelling it and making it and telling the story. It's okay. All of it is okay. And that's the one thing I think that anyone can take away from the book is that it's okay. No matter what you're going through, I swear to God you're going to get through it. And you'll be fine on the other side and, and, and don't give up. And it was okay to talk about that painful yeah. stuff. It really was. I, I don't think that I had a moment, moment where I was, I didn't want to hurt anyone. Right. That was my big thing. I but you were never like, I don't want to talk about that. No. I, yeah. No, I always said, what's the best way for us to explain this to the reader? Right. What is the best way for us to let the reader know how I felt, whether it was scared or something like that? You know, because a lot of it was, I'm 46 now, but there was so much of my life that I was not secure. I was very scared. I had a lot of anxiety because I just, I'm someone that kind of craves that stability and that, you know, I want to make sure that we have a plan and that everything is okay. Even though as crazy as I look, I'm rather conservative. That's not true. Um, so, you know, whatever. Olivia, this is a very interesting question. Prettymessbook.com. Olivia from Park Ridge, Illinois, wants to know, would you ever try being a brunette? I, I was. I really? Was. When? Yes. Um, you, I didn't show you those pics? No. Babe, I thought I showed you. No. They're not in the book, huh? I don't think so. I did one time. Um, it's I'm a little fair. It does make my eyes very blue. That yeah. It, it does make my eyes very blue. But it's also um, I'm a natural like dishwater blonde. So when I was brunette, it looked a little hard. You know, it looked a, a, a little hard because I'm so ghostly. But um, I have done it. Yes. So how much of your hair is real and how much of it is extensions? I have a lot of hair and my own hair is over my shoulders. But there is a ton of hair in here, and the reason for that is. Um, performance hair and this is kind of my brand and kind of the way I live and have lived for several years now but I took my, all my hair out um, to put more hair in <laughs> literally for the press tour and stuff and right. my hair is to hair okay so like all of the all of that you're seeing in the front is m me but yeah there's a ton of hair in here but that's my brand over the top so I make no apologies for that and I'm not gonna lie about it um 
Tammy from Lakeland, Tennessee wants to know, what advice do you give single moms who are struggling with being single and, oh, the question jumped away, struggling with being single and enduring their kids are okay. This is written kind of strangely. Ha. But what advice would you have for single moms who are struggling with being single and uh, raising a child? I As hope, you were. Yeah, yeah. A support system. Your mother, your sister, your your close friends. Somebody to help you. Somebody that can um, sit with you and, and, and listen if you're frustrated and stuff. Because you don't want to take that stuff out on the kids. You need help. It's it's tough. Uh, is this my last book? You got oh, we oh, have these okay. on the table. I can do this. Watch this. Um, PrettyMessBook.com PrettyMessBook.com Erica Girardi, Brian J. Moylan. Um, Eileen. From, this is real. This is real. We Can did you it. believe it? No, thank you. You're welcome. We did it. Um, were you nervous that we would not get it done? No, I was not. I knew that we, no, we're very responsible people. <laughs> we worked really hard and fast. Yeah. But, but I did not know what would come of it. And, um, I'm, I'm really pleased with the result. Have you guys... Are you pleased with the result? I'm absolutely pleased with the yeah, result. And good. I think it was great. I think we both learned a lot. Mm -hmm. And... Um, this is his first book as well. You're a yeah. writer, but not a book. No, never. Um, I mean, I have never talked to anyone in my life as, as much as... Can, and I tell you, can I tell you something? You know the more about me than... You know as much about me as my closest family members. Well, and... and, and we were doing 22 questions. I was like, I could answer all these. And you really, you really can. You really could. Um, so Eileen from Southgate, California wants to know, you have a character in the Kim Kardashian game. Yes. Would you ever consider having your own game? I mean, first off, that was a really cool little thing to have happen. Thank you, Kim Kardashian. Uh, Did they approach you to do that? Yeah. And it was really nice of her to include me in her game because, you know, it's a, it's... It's a huge game. Yeah. Is she a Housewives fan? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Um, but uh, she's been really cool. So thank you again. Would I ever have a game? Yeah. I. You know, I enjoy all this stuff. Writing books, having a game, all that kind of shit. Um, is there anything that, you, you know, writing books, having a game, along those lines that you haven't done yet that you're re you really want to give a shot? There's some interesting things that are in the works. Okay. that I'll tell you about. And I don't think I'd do something that I couldn't, that was way off brand. Like I'm not gonna do baby toys or something like right. that because it's not, that part of my life is over. So that, but music, books, beauty, you know, those kinds. Of, and I don't think I'd have a line of housewares. You know, like I don't think I'd have a Martha Stewart collection. Right. I ain't selling cookies. I, no. But I thank mean, God to, Mar look at Martha. Maybe I should, because she's worth a billion fucking bucks. I know. Martha's, I mean, she had to go to jail, though. Whatever. Um, how do you think you do I still jail? ride for Martha. How would I do in jail? Terrible. <laughs> terrible, terrible, terrible. Um, so Monica from Chicago, Illinois, wants to know, I love your fashion sense. And I know you. you have a design team. Yes. I'm curious to know if you ever do your own shopping for clothes and accessories. Absolutely. Absolutely. Here's the thing. Um, I'm very involved in everything that I wear. I, I have a very specific style. I know what looks good on my body, what doesn't. Sometimes we, it's hit or miss, you know, but um, absolutely. And I do sneak out and go shopping by myself, and oftentimes that's the best shit. Um, so take that. Do you, so are you an online shopper or an in-person shopper? I tend to want to put my hands on it. There's a few boutiques I really enjoy going to. And I also like to go early when the store's first open. No one's there. And I can just walk around and look at the stuff. I enjoy the hand. You know what they call the hand? Yeah. No, the... I'm with you. You want to touch it, I want, try it I on. enjoy the hand. And the hand is the, the way the garment feels. And, um... But you know what? There's some cute shit online, too. You know, that I, I, I do like that. But when you, start, when you start talking about spending real bucks that you've earned, I want to touch it. What are your go-to brands? Uh, a lot of, um, well, we wore a lot of Gucci this year. I uh, wore a lot of Tom Ford, um, McQueen. Uh, I have everything in my closet. Why I sell everything. Would you ever design your own fashion line? With someone. With someone. Yeah. I'm a big believer in collaboration because, like writing a book. Yeah. 
or doing something with making an music. expert. Yeah, making music. Yeah. I'm, I'm a big collaborator. I feel like um, I feel like you you know get the best minds and put them together. Um, let's see. Do we have more questions? Let's make some up. PrettyMessBook.com. PrettyMessBook.com. Erica. Yes. Where can we buy your book? PrettyMessBook.com. Wow. You're kidding. I mean. Brian. Yes. Have you heard of this book, Pretty Mess? No. Do you know where you can get it? Uh, PrettyMessBook.com? Yeah. Oh my gosh. We're so corny. Okay. Um, so have you heard yet doing these signings and being around town, have you gotten any fan response yet to the book? Um, yes. Uh, I've, a couple of people have hit my DMs and said that they really enjoyed. They felt, you know what resonates the most? The stories about my father and my stepfather and the divorce and um, being a child of divorce and being adopted. Uh, my stepfather adopted me. Uh, and that whole situation. A lot of people say thank you. A, a lady today at the signing said, um, I want to thank you for being so open about your father, your birth father excuse me, my father, um, because my dad left and kind of denied me the same way. And wow. I, yeah, I get a lot of that. And I think that once you see someone else has gone through it, that's not unusual, unfortunately. So I've gotten a lot of that. And thank you for being brave, to t brave enough to, to say it, you know? Right. Um, so Michelle from Port Austin, Michigan wants to know, my husband is 27 years my senior. Yes. How much older is Tom than you? 33. And we had a lot of fun joking about it before he passed away recently. Oh, uh, oh, oh, I'm so very this sorry. This took a mate. turn. <laughs> I, I'm so very sorry, sweetheart. Uh, what is your favorite way that you and Tom joke about it? About what? Him being so much older. Uh, you know, I think that we just kind of, he'll make a joke about the 60s or something, or I'll ask him something like, you know, is that when you were in law school? I mean, we make, <laughs> we make little jokes, but my heart goes out to you. I'm very sorry for your loss. Um, that's painful. I'm sorry. Uh, Aubrey from Buxton, Oregon wants to know, hey, Aubrey. what do you say to women who are shy about sex to bring out their sexy side? Well, I think sometimes we need to ask, why are you shy? Do you, have you been shamed or do you feel, you know, where's the shyness coming from? Do you just feel ashamed or, or do you just not know? You can read, you can go online and then... You gotta know you're you're perfect the way you are and just baby steps, baby steps. And you're gonna be uncomfortable, but that's okay. We talk a lot in the book about being comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yep. Any type of success or new venture or anything that you wanna do, it's, you know, man, it's not going to be easy. So you gotta buck up, kids. Uh, Michelle from Fontana, California wants to know, what is your favorite author other than me or book besides your own? I'm reading a book about the shadow, so you know what that the is. The shadow? The young yin shadow. Oh. Yeah. It's, oh. it's it's interesting. I have to talk to you about that because I see so many shadows now. <laughs> now that I know what the shadow is, right, you're like, like all I see is the shadow. Uh, so Rhiannon from Weathersfield, Connecticut. I like that name, by the way. Yeah. Um, Weathersfield is near where Dorit's from. Is it really? Somebody came up to me at a, at a signing at this signing in Jersey and said, I went to high school with Dorit. How cool is that? Uh, what is your favorite Halloween movie or scary movie? Well, uh, when I grew up, Friday the 13th, like the original, was out. And then do you remember this movie called Motel Hill? No. You, are you too young? Motel Hell or Hell? hell. No, Hell. And it, it had Motel Hello, but the O was out. And they used to, um, it was like some redneck motel. This is like my, at my aunt. I used to spend the night at her house, and they used to steal cable when you could kind of uh, jimmy the, yes. the, the thing around where you could stick the dial. It was the old school, man, when it was like the dial. That movie, Motel Hill, scared the shit out of me still to this day. They put the, buried the people in the ground and pulled them out with the tractor. It was fucked up. They ate them. It was real bad. Um, the movie that scared me to death when I was a child was called Watcher in the Woods with Betty Davis. Kyle's in that movie. And Kyle Richards is in it. <laughs> nightmares for like my whole youth. So I asked her what that, she, you know, Kyle, she was in one of the Chainsaw Massacre movies. She was in Halloween. No, but she was also, in, really? besides that, she was also in a Chainsaw Massacre movie or something like that. And there were supposed to be trained rats. She, she'll tell you this. She was supposed to be like under house and trained rats were supposed to run on her. It was, 
You have to ask her about it. It was really intense because it really bothered her for a long time. Um, that but was... she always, you know, being able to work with the great Betty Davis. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Autumn from Russellville, Arkansas wants to know, do you regret not having more children? Uh, no, because I was not able to, um, no, I don't. I have the one perfect one, and, and because I had moved away, I would have felt not right having another child. Um, do you know what I'm saying? Yes. I, f I felt like I had one baby that I really needed to do the right by him the best I could. And I'm also an only child, so I have a small family. Are you looking forward to maybe someday being a grandmother? I mean, yeah, of course. I think everyone looks forward to that. The time isn't right, right. you know, in my well, son's... Well, you're still young. Yeah, and in, and in my son's career. I mean, one, I, one day I, I'm sure I will be. You know, but that that's... I think that's a, a long way away. Um, okay, so we have two more questions, and then um, we're going to wrap up. And I only have two more books to sign. Well, one per book. Yeah. PrettyMessBook.com. PrettyMessBook.com. Did I tell you PrettyMessBook.com? I know you guys are so over me. Uh, Sarah from Los Angeles, California. Says. How do you stay so grounded with all the different personalities that the Beverly Hills ladies have? Perspective. It's all bullshit. Um, <laughs> uh, Kristen has a question that I'm sure you get a lot too. Okay. Uh, on an average day, how long does it take to you, you to get ready? If I'm by myself, okay, this is how I live my life. If I'm working, it's two hours for glam, but that means I'm going on camera. If I'm not working, it's no time at all because guess what? I have my hair in a bun and I have on no makeup. I swear to God. And you know that. I've seen it. You know that. And know what? Your skin still looks amazing. Thank you, baby. You're welcome. Thank you. And and he will tell you, he has been to my office, and I've been, we've been to my hotel room here, and he will tell you when there is no camera, there is no glamour. Period. There is not. Not a stitch. Uh, do you not like to do your own makeup? Uh, I can do it, just not as well. I feel like the profession that I'm in, um, cameras are so very critical these days. I mean, they are more sharp than the human eye. Right. HD. Is no, no one's, one's friend. Not even a fetus. <laughs> so I feel like when it says the word uh, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, you owe it to yourself. Like we said in Bitch Sesh, you know, you got you to gotta pull up. We're on TV. It's yeah. fantasy. Yeah, it's reality. Well, it's really fantasy. And it's a visual medium. It's a visual medium. Give yeah. the people what they want. Yep. Give the people what they want. And they want to escape, and I'm going to help you. All right, last question. Natalie from... Australia. You're big in Australia. Hey, I like Australia, though. Uh, this is a great one to end on. Okay. What's your best piece of advice for any woman other than visiting prettymessbook.com to buy your book? Um, be confident. Be yourself. Speak up. And don't let anyone dictate your life for you. Chase your own dreams. Dream big. You don't have to be anyone other than yourself. And with that, thank you very much. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. And visit prettymessbook.com. Prettymessbook.com. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Thank I you. Love you so